the eigenvalue decomposition will now help us answer two questions that we have been asking consistently in the past. And those are, given a prescribed set of eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors, can one actually construct a matrix that would have those eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors? And perhaps more intriguingly, is there only one such matrix? Or could we have two or more matrices that have different entries but identical eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors? Well, we've actually already answered the first of the two questions, and we did it with the help of diagonal matrices and similarity transformations. And the eigenvalue decomposition will provide the same answer to the question, because after all, the eigenvalue decomposition is all about diagonal matrices wrapped in a similarity transformation. And that answer is yes, you can construct a matrix like that, and you do it by putting the eigenvalues on the diagonal in the middle matrix, the diagonal matrix, and you put the eigenvectors as columns in the matrix on the left, and you make sure that the placement of the eigenvectors is coordinated with the eigenvalues. So if we consider 7 our first eigenvalue here, then the corresponding eigenvector should go into the first column. The one corresponding to the 4 goes into the second column, and the last one goes into the third column. And then you multiply this product by the inverse of this matrix on the right, and this triple product delivers the matrix whose eigenvalues and eigenvectors are as desired. So yes, you can construct a matrix that has the prescribed set of eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. So the first question is answered, but the second question remained open. Is it possible to have another matrix that would have the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Of course, it would be constructed totally differently, but perhaps there is a totally different way of constructing a matrix like that, and we would have another matrix with the same eigenvalues and the same prescribed set of corresponding eigenvectors. Well, the eigenvalue decomposition provides the answer to that question, and it's actually on the board already. We just have to say the right words to convince ourselves of that. The eigenvalue decomposition will show that no, there is only one such matrix. And here's how the argument goes. Well, suppose there was another matrix. Let's call it B. So let's now recall the steps that we took in establishing this decomposition. We found the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And of course, they would be the same for the matrix B as they were for the matrix A. And then we organize those eigenvalues in a, in a diagon on a diagonal for the middle matrix, called it lambda. And that would be the same matrix for B as it was for A. Then we organized the eigenvectors as columns in the matrix X and made sure that we ordered them in the same way. Well, that would produce the same matrix X for B. And that gave us AX equals lambda X. AX equals lambda X. Well, if we repeated all of the same steps for the matrix B and had all of the same elements for the matrix B all along, we would arrive at bx equals lambda x. And when we multiply both sides by x inverse, we would get that b equals the same product, x lambda x inverse. So b would have the same eigenvalue decomposition. And the, and the whole point of the eigenvalue decomposition is if you multiply these three matrices, you actually get the matrix A. Well, by the very same logic, when you multiply these three matrices, you will get the same matrix B. And since it's one and the same product, it's one and the same matrix. So I will actually curve the equal sign here. B is the exact same matrix, X lambda, X inverse. So yes, that matrix is unique. You only have one matrix that has a prescribed set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So a matrix uniquely determines its spectrum, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and the spectrum uniquely determines the matrix. A very dramatic and interesting fact. So, eigen, so eigenvalues and eigenvectors reduce the matrix to its bare essentials without losing any of the information. That's the main takeaway here. But we also learned a very important lesson along the way, and that's the context is just as important as the equation itself, and sometimes even more important, and that equations may say a lot more than meets the eye, depending on the context. 
and it's the framework that's crucial. So what I mean in this case is the fact that we had this expression on the board before. We have written down this very expression when we talked about diagonal matrices and similarity transformations. And that helped us answer the question of whether a matrix can be constructed that has a prescribed spectrum. But we were not able to answer whether there is only one such matrix. Because what we did was have an inspiration and we simply write, wrote down this expression and observed that this new matrix has the same eigenvalues as the matrix in the middle and its eigenvectors are the columns of X. And because of the way we came up with this combination, we were not able to say whether it was an entirely different way of constructing an entirely different matrix with the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But we have now approached this question completely differently from a totally different direction and came up with what turned out to be the exact same equation. But now our interpretation is completely different. And because our framework is new and more robust and powerful, this time we were able to successfully argue that there is only one matrix that has a prescribed set of eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. So a very valuable lesson indeed. And there is one more interesting question that we can ask in relation to uniqueness. And that is, is the eigenvalue decomposition unique? Or could we've come up with another matrix lambda and another matrix X that would in this combination produce the matrix A? And the answer is technically no, it's not unique, but in spirit, yes, it is unique. And here's what I mean. In choosing the matrix lambda or in constructing the matrix lambda, we had one source of arbitrariness. We could have chosen the order of our eigenvalues. Arbitrarily, we were given a set of eigenvalues, but we were not told the order. So we could have put the, the eigenvalue three first, then seven, then four. And then we would have to arrange the matrix X in a consistent fashion. So whatever corresponded to the first eigenvalue, which was now four, would need to be the first column, and then the second column, and then the third column. So the matrix lambda would change, the matrix X would change, and of course the matrix X inverse would change in coordinated fashion. And what we would see is that we have a new matrix lambda, a new matrix X, and of course a new matrix X inverse, and we would conclude that no, the eigenvalue decomposition is not unique. But of course, these two sets of matrices, while different, are very closely related. And because they came from the same way of thinking, with just a certain rearrangement, we can call them equivalent. So those two eigenvalue decompositions would be different, but equivalent. Just like combinations on a Rubik's Cube, if you can go from one to the other, they would be considered equivalent. Of course, they're different. And the whole point of Rubik's Cube is that it's hard to go from one arrangement to another equivalent one, but we would call them all equivalent because you can get from one to the other by very simple operations. Now, if you removed one of the cubes from Rubik's Cube and twisted it in a way that you're not supposed to and put it back in, then you would have a new set of configurations that are equivalent to each other, but not equivalent to the proper Rubik's Cube. So the same sort of thing is kind of happening here. We have a whole family of eigenvalue decompositions. They're all different, but all related so closely that we would call them equivalent. And there are, of course, other sources of arbitrariness. For example, we chose the eigenvector 1, 1, 1, but we could have chosen the eigenvector 10, 10, 10. That would change this matrix and change this matrix in coordinated fashion. Yet another eigenvalue decomposition, but still equivalent to the original one. And there would be even more complexity if two eigenvalues were the same and there were two linearly, eigen, uh, two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the same eigenvalue. Then we could replace these two eigenvectors with any two other linearly independent vectors from the same eigenspace. And this matrix would look very different from what we have right now, maybe even completely unrelated looking. They would nevertheless be closely enough related that we will call them equivalent. 